our partners, the UNESCO chairs uh, are here. They have been with us all through the process, and I'm delighted to present to you uh, Professor Alan Smith, please. Uh, thank you very much, Halil, um, Director General, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, participants in the forum, and friends, many of you, uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, we are delighted to welcome you to this Youth Forum and to be working in partnership with UNESCO, with IIEP, the UNESCO Chair in Galway, my friend Pat Dolan, the Global Monitoring Report and the World Assembly of Youth. Collectively, uh, we bring together our experience of working uh, in education, in policy, in working with youth, and particularly in the three strands that uh, will be explored during this forum. Work in peace building, civic engagement, and youth skills for employment. These are the three strands of the event which we hope to explore over the next two days. My own chair at the University of Ulster, with support from Atlantic Philanthropies, was established in 1999, just after the peace agreement that brought an end to 30 years of conflict in Northern Ireland. But we know from direct experience that that was just the beginning and that peace building goes far beyond bringing an end to violence. Those who have suffered the consequences of violent conflict are also keen to see what the benefits of peace will bring and to experience the so-called peace dividend. This morning at the GMR launch, Gordon Brown used the example of South Sudan to highlight the expectations of many parents and children of education and of how it will help them build a new state after uh, the conflict that they have experienced. And he mentioned that restoration and improvement of the quality of education can certainly represent an early peace dividend. But we need to be careful that the education we restore or that we seek to improve does not simply reproduce the old animosities, the old inequalities, or the grievances that fueled the conflict in the first place. So there is a cause in many situations for early intervention and the transformation of education systems, reform of education itself, so that it can better meet the expectations of the children and youth uh, and is relevant to the challenges that they will face, uh, face in their lives. So there is a role for education reform. However, thinking beyond formal education, we also believe that education can have an important contribution to transforming the conditions that create conflict. The power, the transformative power of education that the Director General was referring to. <clears throat> Alongside an end to violence, people want a greater sense of security in their own communities and societies. This may mean improved relations between old adversaries, new renewed different dialogue with police and security forces, trying to develop more confidence in justice systems that have perhaps fallen into disrepute. People want political engagement, uh, and in politi poli uh, political engagement in systems that work for the public good and not just for the benefit of the few. People want economic opportunity where education and skills offer youth the possibility of developing sustainable livelihoods. And people want social relations between groups that are transformed from animosity into trust and cooperation and in a context where legacies of the past and the hurts and the grievances of violent conflict are dealt with in sensitive and just ways. This is the real transformative agenda in societies affected by conflict. Within the UN, I know that UNICEF is currently working with a number of conflict-affected countries to promote the role of education and work with youth in peacebuilding from this more transformative perspective. So we welcome your thinking and your contributions through this Youth Forum, and particularly how you feel uh, we should be developing transformative policy, working with youth through education, formal and non-formal, programming that is genuinely transformative, and 
building a new knowledge base and evidence base in terms of policy and programming that works. We look forward to your contributions. It's great to have you here. We can relax uh, and take our time after the, the, the welcome ceremony to begin to engage in these sort of conversations and dialogues. So thank you for coming, and um, I look forward to hearing from my colleague, uh, Pat Dolan. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ministers, friends, and lots of friends. Um, this is a point in the journey for a number of us that we're very happy to be at. It's the point where we all come together as a community to look at youth engagement. Over the last year and a half with my colleague and co-chair, UNESCO chair Alan Smith and Way, and importantly the work of IAEP, we've come together with you to look at youth engagement. I think it's important though that we don't see the, the whole concept of youth engagement uh, as reinforcing, as Alan has said, old ways of thinking about youth. It needs new thinking and this is an opportunity for us to do so. So just as we should not see uh, youth as evidence of problems in community, but rather see them as the source of solutions, which they are and have to be for all of us, similarly we should not just look on youth as something that is an investment into the future. Youth do contribute, have contributed, and continue to contribute now to civic society. Similarly, Article 12 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child talks about the whole issue of participation. And this morning, we heard Gordon Brown speak about the whole issue of children and youth's participation in, education, in the education system with frightening statistics. However, I would argue that participation is not a goal in itself. It's a means to a goal. Participation for what? And what part of our role here in the coming few days is to think about how that gets played out among ourselves as colleagues, in partnerships with youth online, in partnerships with ministers, with academics, and with funders. So we're in this together. I want to make particular mention of uh, youth civic engagement, because just as we traditionally have valued political youth civic engagement, there is an emerging evidence that we need to value social civic engagement of young people, moral civic engagement, including empathy of young people, and economic engagement. And in my own country in Ireland, that is a very real issue. One could argue very easily that youth civic engagement in the right set of conditions is the tool for prevention and early in the problem intervention. Similarly, I think into the future, we need to think about youth not just inside classrooms. We need to be aware of non-formal education as a very effective tool in working with and for youth. So inside the classroom is important, but outside the classroom in the community is of equal, if not more, importance. Because there are many young people in the world who do not get to classrooms or do not stay in classrooms. Similarly, access to education for young people is a key issue across all levels. One small example, uh, in our university, uh, we've been working with uh, an NGO partner called Feroiga, Empowering Youth in Ireland, to enable a youth leadership program whereby young people at pre-university stage can uh, access university and complete a level six qualification through youth civic activity and learning. It's an example of how town and gown are brought together between university and community. So I'm arguing that civic engagement for young people can act as a linchpin, a linchpin for civic society, a linchpin for youth themselves and for those that love and care and work with them. This is application, as we will discuss, in conflict, post-conflict and fragile states. It's access to uh, youth activity in rural, non-rural, and in cities. However, I think it's fair to say on behalf of myself and Alan and all our partners, including IEP and Way, that we would be unhappy if this is just a talk shop. What it has to be is something that untaps potential. And I think there is potential. I think we have the potential to talk and find out more about what is the knowledge we need to create in order to enable a proper and full research program. What are the policy conditions we need to develop globally that will enable youth engagement? And what are the programs, and including educational and community-based programs, that need to be enhanced and built on across civic society? 
So I'm delighted to be here. I'm very proud of our chair in NUI Galway. I'm very proud of UNESCO. And I see this as a community for all of us, with all of us, with youth. Thank you very much. As you can see, the uh, UNESCO chairs did not, they felt too much at home and did not need my introduction. But I think that when it comes to the World Assembly of Youth, I have to introduce the Honorable uh, Idris Haron. So, thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A very good afternoon to everyone present. Mr. Chair, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen of the participants. First of all, I would like to begin my speech today by thanking the UNESCO International Institute for Education Planning, in short, IIEP, the UNESCO Chairs of Youth and Peace, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAED, and level universities for the invitation and the opportunity given to the World Assembly of Youth way in short to explore the measures in which this policy forum will engage youth in planning education for social transformation. Ladies and gentlemen of the participants, youth is a period in life where impression and perception are formed. This is a point in life where knowledge gathered and the hard track of life become apparent. Young people are indeed a great asset and resource in our society. They are always searching for something new, exciting, challenging, and adventuring. They are usually the agent of change. They are also recognized as the agent of change acting as a shadow of the futures, especially in the areas of information age, bringing existing and emerging technologies into communities, activities or sectors where lack of access of information has undermined and constrained the development efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, through youth passion for the new technology, they have utilized their education into bringing new innovation and ideas into the society and the world at large. This is just one aspect of their hunger for development. To develop young people who will transform society is a process. It's not just an event. It is a lifelong relationship. The greatest tool we have in our hands is the nations of the world which are rich in culture within and we must use it to teach as it is timeless. We must ignite the education journey through lifelong relationships. We must continue to be an exemplary model for the young people to follow, just like the story of the ducks imprinting. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not new to our knowledge that government and other stakeholders in many parts of the world have focused consider considerable effort as well as numerous resources to give to young people a chance to obtain education. It comes to light every day that these education systems need to be impart, need to impart the different skill and real-time information essential to changing environment. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Assembly of Youth over the years has with more verve and passion sought to give the young people a platform to voice our opinion. In order to harness and realize the full potential of young people as groundbreakers of new ideas, we must change the societal perception, put in the hard work of providing the right experiences and learning opportunities 
that are able to transform young people into valuable members of our society, as well as enhance the prospect of these young people. Ladies and gentlemen, youth are the growing wonders in this century, or rather millennium. Their engagement in issues that suppress their rights have dazzled us during the past years. We have grown used to ideas of transformation and perhaps we forget that we have only just begun. Young people or youth are still pioneers and will strive to be leaders in the future. I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate the prudent words of Professor Diane Ravitch, an educational policy analyst, when she said, quote, surely the greatest nation in the world can mobilize the will to do what is right for the youth. It will not be easy, it will not be cheap, and will not be fast. Doing the right thing never is. The only simple part is to recognize that what we are doing now is not working and will never work. What we need is a vision of a good education for every young people of the world. We should start now. We should start today." Unquote. The theme has therefore been selected in the realization of the needs to educate, to increase awareness and promote decision-making among and with the youth. The Policy Forum acts as a platform for stakeholders to engage with youth directly towards influencing and developing the enduring education systems. I personally believe that we owe it to the young people of today to focus our attention on affording them the opportunities to experience, practice, and develop their skills as proponents in their chosen fields and as leaders of today. It seems to me that through this forum, if we make small inroads, we can build upon the successes and build momentum until we create a wind of change, or rather tsunami of change. Open a few doors to allow small successes. Publicize those examples to create more opportunities for more and bigger successes. Changing mindsets as we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I know some forward-thinking ventures are doing just that today, but with over 3 billion young people across the globe, this needs to become a key focus for our society today. The world needs the value that our young people can deliver. And these young people are crying out for their opportunity to show what they all can do. In conclusion, I wish to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to all parties involved in helping us gather here today for this memorable and meaningful forum. This is much cultural diversity presented here today, and yet we all have the same needs to be heard and to be given an opportunity to have a multiplying effect on our nations as well as our influence society. I wish you all a fruitful deliberation and also a great success in the outcome of this forum. The world out there awaits your input. Be sure to leave footprints in this education transformation program. Lastly, but definitely not least, please, this, please take this quotation from the World Assembly of Youth. Leaders will drive Youth will derive, and together we will arrive. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Before moving into the next session, I would like, since I didn't get the chance at the beginning, I would like to say that 
Without the partnership of many parties, this uh, policy forum wouldn't have been possible. I would like to acknowledge the partnership and the good work uh, with us, with the, the International Institute for Education Planning of the UNESCO chairs, whom you have just listened to from the National University of Ireland, Galway, from the University of Ulster. Thank you very much, Pat and Alan. Uh, the World Assembly of Youth, thank you for being with us all the time. Université Laval, uh, thank you for also uh, supporting our efforts. The Global Monitoring Report, uh, report uh, which was launched today, the team was also a good partner to, for us in this uh, endeavor. UNICEF uh, was a major partner as well and supported us uh, financially as well as in uh, progressing forward in bringing the very important element in this policy forum, the participation of many youth from various countries, difficult and more less difficult, uh, from all around the world, uh, we are really grateful to that. The Atlantic uh, Philanthropies, uh, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, the Open Society Foundation, the American Institutes for Research, and the European Training Foundation, amongst many others. Thank you all. This is possible because of you and because of you participants, and I sincerely welcome the youth participation from many, many organizations and in their own individual capacity. Thank you very much for all for your welcoming and coming.